right. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Jeremy Gay. I'm the founder and the CTO of Created Real. So uh, I'm French, but I've been living in Denmark for 18 years, and that's why I started the company back in 2009. And we are going to be talking about insoles and uh, how we can actually uh, create custom insoles for patients in a sustainable way using additive manufacturing. And I'm here with Marcel. Yeah, thank you. I'm Marcel Domingino from Germany, from the country Gebium. And uh, since we've been talking about insoles today, I'm going to show you a quick tour to the orthopedic world because that is where mainly insoles are still produced. And we're going to do that by. You understand me? We're going to do that by. Uh, taking one of the most severe cases in orthopedic foot care, which is the diabetic foot. Diabetes itself is a quite common disease with worldwide growing numbers. What's maybe not too common is that may many diabetes patients grow a, something which is called diabetic foot syndrome, and this leads them to get so-called ulcerizations, which you see here graphically, and um, which is basically an open wound under the foot. And this is related to a bad, bad blood circulation, and of, in additional to that, blood sensing of the patient. So they don't feel any pressure points, they don't feel any stones under their foot, whatever. And this is what you see on the right side, is a pressure mapping of an actual diabetes foot. You see the red spots and the yellow spots are very high pressure under the big toe, for example. And to treat that, we need a very customized and highly specified insole treatment for them, and to prevent that also, to uh, really get a good pre pressure distribution. And this is done mainly today by two different ways. We once have the old-fashioned handcrafted way, where the total process of it is handcrafted. You take a foam box imprint, you build up a 3D model from that, you build the insole over this 3D model with different materials, and then you have to finish it to get the full customization. Since 20 years, for 20 years, we also have the custom CAD insole based on milling. But in the end, still there to get the full customization, you need to have somebody with knowledge to finalize the product handcrafted. And this is a big issue because this knowledge about orthopedic foot treatment is not very well distributed around the world. And this does mean for some patients, when you have a diabetic foot, not treated, you will lead to ulcerization, and this will lead to amputation in the end. And this is something which has to be treated quite good and has to be tackled. Another aspect of the ins way insults are produced right now is the waste, talking about sustainability, depending on the way you produce an insole, you end up up to 90% waste you have after production of insoles. This, for example, is the waste of five pairs of insoles milled. That's just a big chunks, the dust and every, everything else is in the machine still. So you see you have a big problem with waste. And this is where we said as Gabium, okay, we work in the field for 20 years, and uh, now comes a picture I like very much. <laughs> This is simply not good enough, and it would also be not good enough to just copy with 3D printing what we can already do with milling. So we said, okay, we need to tweak this technology to another level, we need to do something special, and that's where Credit Real came into the picture. Right, so Marcel came and explained his case in his industry, and we were like, yeah, I agree, it's not good enough. It's crazy, so much waste. Oh. So um, there must be a better way. And uh, luckily, there is this beautiful technology called uh, additive manufacturing, commonly uh, called 3D printing. And um, it's a technology that is a bit tired of printing Star Wars figures, and it's looking for real-life case scenario to, to solve issues. So um, since 2009, we were playing with this technology and developed a lot of expertise. So when Marcel came with this problem, we were very happy, and uh, we thought, yes, 3D printing can solve that. Often, uh, so uh, that's the technology adoption life cycle. I don't know if you know this, but uh, look it up. Uh, it's the Gartner uh, chart. So often you see that uh, 3D printing five, 10 years ago, it's super hyped. Everybody is thinking, oh my God, it's going to change everything. It's going to be everywhere. And then they get disappointed. Why? Because the technology is not to the level. People don't really know how the technology works, what they can do with it. They don't know what application they can use it for. So uh, they use a small printer, hoping to get the same result of a, uh, one that costs millions. So uh, it's, uh, it's not a funny moment. Luckily, this time is passed, and now we are in the moment where people have played with the technology. They are now looking at real application, and they, they know what they want. So that's Marcel coming to us and saying, oh, OK, I know how I can completely disrupt my industry using 3D printing. But it's a bit difficult to go from that I identify the application to, towards I'm uh, actually at the plateau of productivity where you are producing with uh, additive manufacturing. 
So most of us customers, uh, they look like this. They have played with the technology, they take it to a certain level, and then they say, hey, we have a cool prototype. We brought it to 80%, but uh, we are stuck there. So they have cool prototypes, they have cool cases, but it's not out there. It's not a, a real product. And that's where we can tap into what we've done and uh, help them to go to, uh, from 80% to 100%. So yeah, the additive manufacturing technology is not plug and play, and you have to tweak a lot of stuff. It can be the material, the printhead, the software, and you need to be able to adapt that. So our approach to this is that we have all the technology bricks. We have a slicer, the software, we have the electronics, the control. We even have printer design, printed design, and then we just adapt it to the application. So we look at the application as a starting point, and then we modify everything around it so that it's delivering 100%. And then that can go, and that makes the change of going from you're making a prototype to you're actually uh, using additive manufacturing for production. So that was the perfect partnership. Uh, <laughs> so when Marcel explained this, we said, we can solve it. Uh, then we start looking into how could we get you know, their uh, know-how. They have so much domain knowledge about their industry. How could we get it out and transform that into features that were needed to be developed into 3D printing? Because in Created Real, our advantage is that we, we can modify the technology. You don't have to wait for the technology to be good enough. Uh, we can adapt it to your application. So we first started this uh, journey then by looking into what can we make different to what we have, asked with a lot of customers, did a lot of research and materials, and we saw that one key aspect was to give the orthopedic shoemaker the possibility to really control the hardness of the insole at every part he wants to have, so digitally and reproducibly. And this is what we saw as one key aspect. The other aspect was for us to make sure that we have a good gradient between the different hardness zones to really enable a good pressure distribution with no edges or so ever when there's a big difference between soft and hard zones. And this is what we said to create it real. We need to do that. All right, so in our years it was, okay, you need to control the hardness, therefore you need to control the density and you want to print with a flexible filament, elastic filament. So we went back to the core technology and we had to modify the algorithm to generate the inside structure in a different way. And we managed to do it by creating soft zone close to hard zone. And then there were a very difficult requirement, which was, oh, I need a gradient between those two. Oh, okay. Uh, so we managed to do that too. And um, uh, now we are actually able to create insole with hard zone and soft zone with the full gradient in between, which is the key to actually make them comfortable. Otherwise, you're always stuck at this prototype level. So this is the solution. So we developed that uh, capability. This is uh, one of the three printed insoles that we have. We developed that capability, and we were very happy. Now we can do it, and we can solve the, the problem that Marcel is facing. But that was just not enough. We wanted, you know, everyone should have that, and as fast as possible. So how do we bring it to market? So we decided to actually make the full development of a, a solution. So we made the printer, we made the print head, we found the right material, we developed the software, and then we made not a 3D printer anymore, but a tool for orthopedic shoemakers. So for them, it's an insole making machine. It has nothing to do with a 3D printer. It's this moment when you reach the plateau of productivity where you don't care what the technology is uh, behind the scenes. All you are looking for is the value that it brings to you. Yeah, that's also what we did with the software. So we made a new model which can simply be placed on top of the CAD software they still have, so they can still use their process of modeling the 3D model they used to have, and then they get the functionality of defining the different shortnesses there uh, in a very easy to use way, as you see here is, for example, an insole with different shortnesses, and also the colors represent the shore, and the gradient you also see in the colors represented. And we also looked into the material, into the slicing profile together with Credit Real to uh, enable them to work with shore hardness, what they are used to use before, and we created the slicing profile in a way that when they select 35A shore hardness, then the material behaves similar to what they used to have from EVA material with the same shore hardness. Moreover, we also said, okay, we need to do an impact not only in functionality, but also in uh, sustainability, and uh, talking about much of ways and the possibilities here, and we said, okay, we want to go fully circular on that one. So meaning that we want to take back the insults and uh, reuse them. So every process starts with a measurement of a patient, definition, printing, 
Then we still have a small step of handcraft work, finishing the ends of the textile cover. But this is something everybody could do, basically. Me, I also could do that to put a cover on top. So thereby, we enable, for example, the process of having the scanner in Beijing or whatever, a designer here in Copenhagen, for example, and a printer back in Beijing. And you only have to have somebody with knowledge in Copenhagen to design this insole. And after this finished process, the usage period starts, normally between half a year and a year, depending on what kind of insole you have. And then we urge the customer to bring the insole back to the orthopedic shoemaker. And we are taking these insoles back to us and trying to recycle them, make them new filament. We already got the first big batch of material back and right now looking into how much material we really can reuse for new filament. And we also created the deposit system to really support that uh, bringing back mentality, not only relying on that, but also pushing that forward. Yeah, another problem in additive manufacturing is the, the business model. So uh, we were really innovative on the technical side, but we thought, okay, we need to look at the business model too. Well, one thing that we see is a lot of 3 printer manufacturers, the one making the printers, have a very simple business model. They make the printer, they sell it, and that's it. Then they are looking at the next customer. So people that buy the printer are buying a generic printer, and then they try to tweak it so that it works for their application. And then when they go back to the manufacturer for help, they just say, yeah, you know, I'm just selling generic printers. I, I don't care about your application. Uh, it's not, there's not enough volume for, for me. So we thought that this was not a good way. Um, we needed to find something better. So what we came up with was a, a business model where we have a paper print fee. So on every insole being printed, there's a fee that goes and that is shared between all the actors in the value chain. And that makes the model much more fair so that you are actually interested to have continuous development. Uh, so it means that when we launched the, the solution, we kept developing on top of it. We found new type of insole that we could print and we, we, we don't stop, we keep, uh, we keep going after that. Yes, and uh, we are quite proud to say that we not only talk about business models and uh, visions, we can also say that we already are a commercial solution in action. And uh, the technology is used day by day right now to print insoles. And we are coming back to our diabetes patient from the beginning because uh, on the left you again see the pressure mapping, the initial pressure mapping. And what you see on the right is the pressure mapping on a printed insole. Uh, you don't see any high pressure spots there anymore. You see a really perfect pressure distribution. This is what you really want to get to uh, prevent ulcerization, and this is a very good uh, yeah, solution. Yeah, another thing is the, the carbon footprint. You remember the 90% waste? On the bottom right, this is the waste with the, with the 3D printer. So that's uh, quite an improvement, and uh, I think uh, we can say we made uh, Gordon Ramsay happy. So um, yes, uh, we don't have much time for the questions, so, <laughs> but we have a booth out there. So please come to the Created Real booth, and then uh, we can talk a lot about it. We also have a printer. We can actually show you the solution in action. Thank, Thank you. you.